Hello and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. It is the second cycle and uh, we have just undergone uh, some kind of interesting effect or change in ourselves. It seems like we are connected to the station in more ways than one, but we don't know how. So we're going to try and find a doctor maybe before I can uh, do anything in, you know, any work. Um, ask for directions is dangerous. I'd still like to explore the market. That seems like a, it's risky, but it's, you know, not too bad. I guess if I put one of these in dangerous, um, I don't ha I don't stand a chance or I, I, I don't stand to lose, but all the same, let's just explore the market. Maybe we'll find something, uh, else. Plus, plus local knowledge. Positive outcome. Nice. Um, and we can put one more die in here. Because we need to fill that up in order to complete that. Oh, negative outcome? Really? There's only a 25% chance of that happening. We're going to have to spend all of our dies to make this happen. So, I, 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 I like, no point in working on this if we don't complete it i think um bright market is the busiest part of the eye eyes lower rim you can find anything and everything here action unavailable okay we found sabine 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 i'm not sure next comes the call from the enforcer at the door you shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. Yes, you were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now that you are here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block, they have all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few, and without a supply of stabilizer, this body your body will, uh, you surpass a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Look inside. You lean against the doorframe and look into the apartment. The entryway is dark, punctuated by the green indicators of stacks of sealed containers. You lean in and see amber light flickering, sorry, filtering through a far doorway screened with plastic sheeting beyond which blurred shapes move. The slap of the enforcer's palm against the doorway jerks you awake. Wait your turn, he growls. After a few moments, a figure pu pushes through the doorway and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in warm, warm light a floor-to-ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market-sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above, and for a moment you are transfixed by the motion. The nice duds. No one says that anymore. Come sit, calls a sharp voice, and you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. A doctor in the bright market, Sabine. I'll, I'll just, I'll just commit to Sabine. The figure turns and as they do, you see an expre expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak. They blink and then quickly regain their composure. Please sit, they gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. You sit. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you first entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on this station? Uh, they ask. The scanner still to their eye. Don't answer. They lower the scanner and meet your eye. You can talk, they glance towards the doorway. I know the conditions aren't ideal, but I need you to be honest with me. They make some adjustments to the scanner, or you can leave. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. 
They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying, they say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. Essen Arp doesn't like to see its prop a proprietary technology let loose to prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping. They built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one which Essen Arp remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yes. Good, that may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says. And you are unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal or uh, everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers, are, uh, as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm, and Essen Arp has no reason to release stabilizer into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use of. Uh, I know a little of this is to, of use to you. Good lord, that sentence was hard for me. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silent, uh, silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something, anything. Sabine turns to you. I may be able to help. They sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes. Hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside? You nod. He works for my benefactor, Yadagan. They are influential in the low end. They give me the space to work, run the door, take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. But Yatagan has connections, smugglers from the steward belt, mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate and their notes complete. This, this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive, but I think we can do it. Why help me? Sabine walks away to the window, their face draped by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave. Sabine's still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face, but the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. Can we get food? Emphis is busy, his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. Something I really appreciate about this game is how extra, like, overly designed the characters are in this game. Like, it's generally a, um, a criticism that, like, people offer to games. Like, look how overly designed these characters are. Like, uh, especially in, like, any anime game. But I really appreciate how, how the, the over, sort of, like, exuberant designs of the characters in this game because um, all of the extra-ness is generally functional. It's, it's a function over form, as they say. Um, like, everyone either has some kind of, like, interesting, uh, like, choice of clothing, or they have something that tells, tells you something about their character, like, almost instantly. But I also just really like the, the vibe. Uh, like, there, you, you can, you can tell their character comes from a place, um, you know, like, even if uh, I can't imagine anyone in our world wearing anything like this or looking like this, I can imagine a world that this person would wear this kind of clothing and have this kind of utility. Emphis is busy, his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. His other uh, hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red-flecked dressing. The smell is incredible. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with the bright salad and de uh, depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, handing, handing over payment. Approach. 
You join the queue. It's mostly made of off-duty salvagers. Vac suits unzipped and rolled down to expose stained vests. Grubby mods, a lattice of scars and tattoos. They drink, uh, sorry, they discuss the best foods on the eye. The best drink. Comparing notes on bright market dives. Their words cut through with heavy spacer slang. Eventually it's your turn and you shuffle to the front. Emphis speaks in a deep, even tone without looking up. First try is free. Thank him. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire, and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers, Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. A hard life of, uh, a hard life, a lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap and with piercing eyes. I know. Tell him a story. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he gnaws as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility and its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container, and the endless cycles spent within it. Now it seems, you tell him, like some dream that you once had but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and you are unsure where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually, you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time we can talk some more, he smiles, but next time you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner's side and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across his forearm, each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin marks. We can see that also reflected sort of on, on his actual character design. Another thing I do appreciate is it has something to do with his character. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. Nice. We have eaten food. Um... I don't know if there's anything... Wait for Sabine to acquire the stabilizer. So this is a cycle... Cycle something? I can't read that. Cycle clock. That is a cycle clock, and so we cannot uh, do anything with that. We just have to wait for that to happen. Ort exchange, hardware exchange. We could come here. Um, we have more stuff to do here, but we are out of dice. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go home because I, I have nothing else I can do really. No completed drives. Get to know Emphis. Repay Dragos. Build a ship mind. Build a ship mind. You've heard talk of a fabricator owned by the Ort Exchange. With that and a few fragments, you could build a ship mine core, gain access to the Oort Fabricator. I don't know how I learned of that, but for now, our main drive is to survive. You need access to corporate pharmaceuticals, otherwise this escape attempt will come to a rapid end. So we are, we're, we're good on this for now. Um, so let's, uh, let's go home. We'll have uh, that answers my question is like how long can you spend on a cycle? It'll it'll kind of vary. I'm I, I'm pretty sure. I, maybe some cycles are going to be longer and some shorter. Again, the skeletal ring of the station feel fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights, like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads you see bright shapes, caches of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, then leap off into the void. You begin to understand. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops, that it almost seems impossible to parse. But you begin to try. Focus on the th on the nodes. The nodes are glassy, bright, but in all this flow, the only solid and fixed points. 
You approach one, a pyramid, or a triangle. Dimensions are difficult here. And lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse any further, the glass clouds and, har uh, and hardens, cutting you off. Oh, I see the glass clouds and hardens. The threads and nodes, passages and puzzle boxes. One leads to another. There is so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the path and open the boxes. You look out across the ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then that insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down again and see two lines, two threads pulling in different directions, as if they were tied around you. The first. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. The second. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something. A sphere shimmering above a strange angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam testing you, tasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. So we need to eat again. Um, we only have three dice. I think it's partially because we're taking condition damage. I'm not sure why we took condition damage. Tutorial, the cloud. Something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While there, you can use dice and items to access the systems and extract the data. But be careful, these networks are old and strange. Click the I button at the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. Oh, interesting. Wow. Haven, uh, have, uh, havenage gate? Haven, haven age gate? I'm not sure how to pronounce some of these things. Key node? Key node? Agent Solheim. There is a lot to discover here. Access protocol. Oh, this is interface. Data actions allow you to extract data from the networks of the eye. They work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must match your dice to the one displayed on the right of the action. If you have a plus one or plus two modifier in the interface skill, you will be given more possible dice to match. You can use any dice that matches the dice displayed. Once unlocked, the data can be extracted. Well, that's cool. We don't have any dice um, to match this one, unfortunately. But there are other potential ones. Yeah, we're kind of stuck. Y yet again, agent? Wow, we really don't have any matching dice right now. Uh, I'm looking, I'm honestly looking for anything that we could learn about. Sol, slot Solheim Cipher. This gate conceals a network of systems which have been untouched since the Solheim collapse. We would need a cipher, which we do not have. Uh, wow. Two and three still don't have a dice to match. One and three. I am sensing that it tends to favor low rolls. Two and three. Yeah, it never went above three. If it went above three, I would have had matching dice. So actually do, rolling better dice is in some ways um, worse for us if we want to do data gathering. But um, interestingly, uh, roll, low rolls are something that we could potentially throw at this uh, in case we want to, uh, you know, like it, we don't have to risk using them in situations that could harm us. So let's go ahead and eat some food. Uh, uh, I guess I, oh, I can use that. Yeah, 15 credits. Let's go ahead and do that. Start action. We got plus three energy, neutral outcome, plus fungus fan. Emphis doesn't trust people easily, but he notices uh, his regular customers in his own quiet way. Really like the, like the characters are, are really compelling, I have to say. Pay low end toll. After some spacers cause some trouble in the low end, 
Yadagan have imposed a toll for entry. No one gets in without paying. So I could save up some money to, to get in there. I do want to help Dragos. Um, this again, this is a cycle clock, so I can't really do anything about the doctor. So why don't we go ahead and work with uh, Dragos? Reach the style. Starward belt and return loaded with scrap from the old Rex. This is uh, also a cycle clock, so actually not not helpful So let's go to Dragos's yard And try and keep on top of this um, We'll continue working uh, since we have good dice rolls. Let's work on hull dissection Back in business plus 15 cryo positive outcome and we only have 100% positive. Actually, this is, yeah, this is a six. So there's only good things to come from that. Positive outcome. We should be able to complete this. Positive outcome. We got some, we got a good amount of cryo. So we should, we should get some story from that. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast, dark shape, suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. She's a beauty, isn't she? Drago stands to the side, focused on the hulking ship as it is lowered into the yard. What is it? Drago laughs. That, my friend, is an A-grade ship. A-grade scrap, sorry. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Dragos for this monstrous craft. You can't help but think of what became of its crew. What happened? What do you mean? He glances at you. I managed to convince our salvager friends to give it to me on credit. That's what happened. No, what happened to the ship? Not my concern, he shrugs. The ship creaks like a cow, uh, a calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I know I shouldn't... Uh, sorry, I know I said you shouldn't stick around, but I'm going to need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the hull, their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull watching you wonder uh watching you wonder if you s arrived in a similar fashion locked inside that container the wreck of the s and r freighter lowered lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered or was the container delivered to dragos on its own a womb for your rebirth into this strange station you shudder perhaps if you could learn something about this ship you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard Dragos squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we are up to it. What do you think? You see the fading name on the ship, emblazoned on its side. Winter light. Let's do it. He claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting and then uh, slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. We got an upgrade point. We completed a drive. Character and upgrades. You've completed your first drive. Each drive completed unlocks an upgrade point to spend on character, uh, upgrading your character. Access your character menu via the, end, uh, the arrow button at the top right of the screen. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I wasn't even expecting to be able to do stuff like this. Um, to, like, upgrade our character, but I guess it makes sense, of course. So, we can pick, I guess, anything but so photosynthetic skin. Or endurance. Oh, wait, no, we can. So, we can upgrade, uh, I guess, anything except the interface. Which is kind of odd when I think about it. Up one upgrade point, or we can spend two upgrade points. I guess you can only upgrade something once. That's interesting. So if I want to... So it takes one upgrade point to upgrade one of our skills. Um, 
and then two upgrade points to upgrade a skill which is based on that skill or not a skill i guess these are these are something else oh i didn't mean to do that i didn't mean to do i i swear to god that was not my intention okay well we're an efficient extractor now um Chance to gain random stra a scrap item on engineer actions. You know, that's fine. I am actually totally fine with that. That is uh, something I, I, I appreciate. And I see myself doing more of that. Okay. Um, shipyard. So we can do more stuff here. Assist the ship builder. Haul materials. So uh, maybe next time we gain a point, we could spend it to uh, upgrade, get a plus one in engineer. This is blinking, but it doesn't, uh, there's nothing I can do here. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, sleep. We don't have anything else we can do right now. Oh, uh, whoops. Steel dock plans. Havenage security has to have plans. Stealing them would be the fastest way to get to know this place and the most dangerous. Um, interesting. Explore the rotunda. All right, let's wait. Ort exchange. Oh, this is interesting. Sell components. The ort exchange is always hungry for new hardware to buy up. Break down and sell off and you are happy to supply it. The flow of chits and components in the exchange is complex, but a sharp but a sharp eye and some tight trades can net you uh, net you a good margin. It's funny is that like nothing really works with interface except for um, gathering data. We could um, gain access to the low end gate, but I'm not sure if that is actually a good idea. But either way, I do want to go home and sleep. We only get two dice now because our condition is declining and it, it looks to me like um, once it falls far enough, you get less dice. So if we can improve our condition, then we'll get more actions per cycle. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wait up. Turn. Feng. Feng is coming down the corridor towards you, a wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? He grins. You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around, just want to chat. You staying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was the... What was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for us all? Nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it, is, it isn't easy. We? We pass together into the main walkway. Havenage. We are all one dysfunctional family. Feng puts uh, an arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch, though. Don't, don't worry, I'm with systems. Systems? Everything the eye runs on. He runs a hand along the passage wall. This place is a ruin, but systems keep it spinning somehow. At least we try to. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I saw you around and, uh, well, I, I know a little bit about you sleepers. I have a little proposition for you. He glances around, but this is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then, when you are settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. He put, uh, pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. I like the music. So fortunately, we have good rolls. What is, uh, this is still a cycle clock and it's almost done we still don't have um access to uh our stabilizer so that's kind of a problem 
Um, we do have a, th a three die though, so we could maybe gather some data ourselves. Yadagon gauge agent. We could um, we could have some uh, um, information on Yadagon. Some gang enforcers' uh, implants are chirping out comm signals. Time to see what they are talking about. Um, let's grab some food first. I want to stay on top of that. And also, I, I want to progress our fungus fan. Nice. Um, and I believe that almost always improves our, our sustenance, whatever, by three. So as long as we're not above two, then we can do that without wasting anything. Um, play the exchange. Risky. We could throw something down on this. Uh, it might be worth doing something like this to source out for stabilizer in our own way. Uh, Dragos's nerve seems increasingly nervous about your presence in the yard. I'm not sure he's going to hold his nerve much longer. So we can work on the winter light. Cutter salvage. This is dangerous, apparently. Ship breaking is tougher than slicing up loose salvage, but Dragos is ha happy to pay you a fixed wage if you're up to it. Um, what I really need to do is see if I can progress things um, towards stabilizer. But I don't know how I would go about doing that. Assist the ship breaker, haul materials. As a newcomer, you can only gain favor by grabbing a load of materials and asking the nearest a yard hand where to take them. Nah, that's uh, that's not a good idea for us. I don't think. So I don't know. Let's um let's find something to throw our three at that would be interesting. Data here is part of a cache tucked away during the collapse. Who hid this and what for what purpose? All right, let's uh, let's do this one. Bypass. Five, plus five cryo, extract data. Plus one encrypted key, neutral outcome. Okay. So that is that spent. So we have an encrypted key now. So we could like send, spend this on Solheim for instance. Oh no, we need a cipher for that. A stream of passcodes able to unlock the station's aging mag logs. Okay, um, so I mean gain, gaining some more money would be not a terrible idea and uh, we can do so with uh, at uh, Dragos's yard And we have a, a six so it might be a good idea to work on this cutter salvage Investigating the winter light means picking through its systems and structures with care. It won't pay but you might may find answers Interesting well, we do have money for the next few days, so maybe it would be good getting answers. Uh, let's let's use this spin, uh, this six on a, on a dangerous one, because then we we have, you know, less to worry about, and we can make progress on this. Plus yard clearance, plus sixteen cryo, so we have enough for food for tomorrow. All right, um, that's going to do it for today. We would like to work on, like, I'd like to uh, follow up on Finn as well. We're, we're being hunted. We don't know what that means yet, but I'm not sure where that is. Uh, Rotunda Wetlock, Old Dock Terminal. Yeah, I'm not sure where uh, Finn is located, so that's uh, something else to follow up on. So let's go and sleep, and I'm going to probably end the episode here. Let's just uh, see if there's any more flavor text. Yeah, we're not we're not doing so well, but 
I have a funny feeling that this is uh, kind of uh, by design. We got two good rolls. Okay, so we, we got no flavor text, but we should be able to source stabilizer. Yeah, so we'll see what uh, that where that leads in the next episode. If you're enjoying the series, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.